This next uh, lecture, what I wanted to do is discuss perspective and its use in architecture. And what we're going to be doing is talking about sort of a linear perspective in a way, um, how the architecture sort of reflects their understanding of linear perspective, and also classical perspectives and humanistic perspectives. And we're going to start with this palace, the Palazzo Medici Riccardi in Florence. And um, it was orig originally the Medici Palazzo. And one of the things about many of these palazzos is that originally they were a series of buildings that um, were unified or put together because they weren't allowed to build uh, super big buildings because of sumptuary laws in Florence. And sumptuary laws are basically the idea that you can't have an ostentatious um, expression of your wealth in um, in Florence, you can't wear certain kinds of uh, clothing and you can't uh, build super big structures and things like that because it's too showy and that's not humble enough. So most of these buildings are actually uh, facades. And what I'm talking about in terms of facades are that the structure itself might just be a simple, almost a post and lintel architecture for a majority of the building with some arch technology in the interior of it. But the exterior of the building which looks like stonework is actually not. It's a facade, it's, it's clay and concrete and cement that's made to look like stonework. And so if you look at the bottom course of this building, you can see that the sort of facade or stonework that's on it is rusticated. And I have the word rustication there on the screen for you, which means that it's rustic, it's rough. That's what rustic means. And then as we move up the surface of the building, it's almost like a drawing that becomes fainter and fainter. As you get near the, uh, the second tier of the building, you can actually see that the rustication becomes less uh, expressed and that it's more like a, um, a lower relief. Uh, we might refer to that as a bas relief. And so on the bottom, it's haute relief and, and higher rustic rustication. And as you move to the very top of the building, that um, relief becomes almost not expressed at all. It's almost just like a, a drawing in the cement of the classical orders. So I think that to talk about those things is very important because these buildings are more or less mansions that are meant to house wealthy banking families like the uh, Medici. And they are an expression of the ideas that are happening in painting. So these close-ups kind of express some of the, the things that I want to discuss a little bit more with you. For instance, the right-hand image, you can see that this rustication is really almost intimidating and that there are these bars on the windows. And there's a good reason for this, that the Medici were actually worried about being attacked by other families. And at several points, uh, if you study their history a little bit more, you'll actually find that at one point there was a, an assassination attempt made in a church, believe it or not, um, where people were stabbed and, and, and one of the Medici got away. And so the houses are meant to be fortress-like, castle-like, and so the bottom rustication is meant to look tough and meant to keep you out. Now the other thing that I wanted to point out is if you look at the kind of ornamentation, again, it's almost like we find on some of the triumphal arches where we have these engaged columns against triumphal arches and pilasters against triumphal arches that don't support the building. In this case, in this instance, we can actually see that there are arches above the doors and the windows that are drawn um, in a sort of bas relief on the, the walls themselves that don't serve to actually support the walls or the windows themselves. They're really more or less just ornamentation and not true Roman arches. So what I'm suggesting to you is that we have this idea that they're still going to use Roman triumphal arches as a decorative theme to express a classical reference. And this classical reference is also kind of expressed in the rustication as we move up from the bottom to the top. Remember when we studied the Colosseum, it kind of had um, a heavier order on the bottom of a Doric order, then it moved up to a Corinthian and then an Ionic order at the top, and then really uh, engaged columns that were uh, something that was very ornamented, uh, a composite type of order. And we're going to see this in other buildings. So. Um, it's a way of expressing a lightness to heaviness that is uh, sometimes expressed in painting as almost atmospheric perspective, sometimes linear perspective. This is an aerial view of, of the palazzo. And what I wanted to kind of 
discuss or show you in a way is that the palazzo itself is designed to be an inward looking structure. Now there are windows along the outsides of it, but the interior courtyard would have been almost in a way a living room for them. It would have been a place that they could get away from the noises and smells of the streets. And remember that they had horses that were constantly coming through these streets and that people were making noise and there was it was very, very noisy. Actually probably noisier than our streets today with the horses and the wagons and that kind of thing. And certainly much smellier because horses uh, uh, you know, soil the streets. So we have an interior courtyard um, in the center of this building. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the interior courtyard because you're going to see that it also makes classical references. Wouldn't you like to have this uh, attached to your house? Um, so we're looking at an interior courtyard and we can see all this classical sculpture around the uh, inside the uh, peristyle. Uh, that's the perimeter stylos, which is basically, um, stylos is the word for column in ancient Greek and Latin. And so um, the perimeter of this has an overhang. So even when it was raining or when it was super hot and the sun was beaming down, you could get into the shade. And if you look in the sort of side hallways or at this peristyle, you can see that the, um, the vaulted ceilings are ribbed uh, groin vaults. Um, and we also see classical columns complete with a little bulging in the center of these Corinthian columns in the foreground, which is referred to as entasis, which is the slight bulging in the center. And we have a, um, the columns themselves are surmounted by uh, arches, which are a reference to the classical Roman past. And then there's even ornamentation, for instance, the garlands and the uh, medallions and cartouches that we see uh, just underneath the windows in what we refer to more or less as the entablature above the arches there, that sort of frieze that's running along the top has, uh, has references to classicism as well. So what I'm suggesting to you is that in the Renaissance, especially in Florence, the architecture is really responding to this new humanistic education that we discussed in our lecture on Florence, that Everybody needs to really understand the classical past because that is what they consider themselves the heir to. And what they're trying to say is that it's a rebirth of the Roman and, uh, and Greco-Roman classical past and that they understand this, this architectural form and that they are sort of having a rebirth of this really uh, Republican um, moral time. So let's look at another building that does similar things. The Palazzo Rucciolai by Alberti is probably a little bit more famous uh, than the Medici Riccardi by Michelozzo. And I think that it expresses a lot of the ideas that we've discussed in probably in a slightly better way. And so what I want to show you is that, first of all, on the uh, right hand side of the image, that shows the facade of the Palazzo Rucciolai, you can actually see that the facade actually sort of runs out. And that's because those were those buildings that were unified again. And so when they did uh, subsequent renovations and, and other buildings were bought out, they sort of ran out of, um, out of building and they, um, and they sort of took the facading off as, as other people own the building. So we only see a partial facade on this building and you can literally see that it's all just decoration. It's not really meant to be clearly, um, it's not what the building was made out of. The building was made out of inferior materials that are faced with other things. So I want you to think of the, the exterior of the building as almost a uh, bas relief drawing that shows classical architecture. And if you look kind of uh, a little bit closer at some of the ornamentation on it, you can see that it goes from a sort of almost a Doric looking uh, pilaster at the bottom and we move up and we've got these other pilasters that have more ornamented capitals on the top. And we'll refer to that in a, in a second. And that's, and that's quite literally a reference to the Colosseum in a way, that the bottom level of the Colosseum actually has Doric order. And then as we move up, we have um, the, uh, the Ionic order, and then we have Corinthian order, and then the very top pilasters actually have the uh, composite orders.
So I wanted to zoom in a little bit and kind of just show you some of the ornamentation and the, the classical references. So um, the windows themselves are topped with what looks like a classical Roman arch, uh, complete with stone, with um, sort of carving into the cement that look a bit almost like keystones and and uh, and the entrados and, and things like that. Then we have these uh, the family crest that's hanging above the window, so it's almost like this this uh, triumphal arch that's surmounted by the family crest. And then you can see at the top there is this uh, architrave and this entablature that that's running along the top that have these sort of garlands and these classical looking carvings that are meant to reference the the wealth of the family probably growing like a vine. And we even have um, capitals on top of the pilasters that are a little bit like a Corinthian or a composite order, but it's not an order we've actually seen before. It's almost like they're riffing on things and they are improvising on earlier orders and adding to it. They're adding to a classical past, and we can see that on the tops of all of the columns.